my father passed, I wanted nothing more than my mother's happiness. For what kind of man would I be if I did not help my mother, if I did not save her? The film The Power of the Dog begins with the voiceover of Peter, son of Rose, an emotionally vulnerable widow with alcohol problems. She played the pianola in movie theaters and her new husband, George, buys for her something better, a real piano, but she is unable to play it, and she feels embarrassment in front of guests. I'm so sorry. I can't seem to play. I, I played in the cinema pit for hours and hours. I'm so, I'm so sorry. To make things worse, when Phil, her new brother-in-law, hears her pounding on the instrument, he challenges her with his own instrument, the banjo, which he plays perfectly well. Phil is a bitter man, he suffers from the memory of a man he loved, we don't know whether requited or secretly, and now he is a toxic, rabid, unsociable, and above all unhappy man, but he is like a wounded animal, not an evil one, Peter is cold, calculating, and he is strong, with grit and stamina, all the teasing for his mannerism does not make him weaken, he begins a sentimental bond with a boy whom he leaves as soon as his mother asks him to move in with her at her new husband's estate, and he moves in to keep his promise, to protect and save her mother, in his own way, of course. In this unique western, with its harsh atmosphere of foretold tragedy, composer Johnny Greenwood's music is essentially placed on three characters, the mother, her son and Phil. George, the husband a good man is not musically considered. Peter? Can't you come in and talk for a little? The music for Rose has the piano, or the pianola as main instruments, for obvious reasons. She does not have a specific theme, but a series of segments that expose her fragility, her sadness, or her vulnerability. In the final shot, after what has happened, when Peter sees her from the window kissing George, a perfectly well-played piano is heard in the music. The opening musical theme opens the way to scenes in Montana and immediately shows Phil as part of the landscape. It seems as if little by little Phil takes over the theme, as if he masters it. But the violin imposes on Phil an air of sadness. These are the first indications that he is not the cowboy he pretends to be. In fact he even loses the theme, as he watches his brother leaving to meet Rose, George himself seems to take over the theme. As soon as he suspects that his brother is in love with the widow of a man who committed suicide, Phil becomes furious. The music that surrounds him from now is strange, bitter. It is strident and noticeable. It is his aura, much more of rage and pain than of evil. He is a contradictory being.
a conflicted homosexual who is so upset by the presence of a woman in his house that he tries to turn her son against his mother. And precisely here, in this scene, his negative and toxic character comes to effect to contaminate that positive musical theme, which he destroys. Peter is introduced with his mother's pianola as he makes a paper flower for her, but it soon gives way to dark, sinister sounds. When he visits his father's grave, his mother's pianola is heard, but also a musical motif that sounds like a howl. The repetition of this motif is clearly associated to Peter, as the pianola is to his mother. When Peter goes in search of the dead animal to take traces of anthrax to poison Phil, this is already the music of an intention. Tell you something. Everything's gonna be plain sailing for you from now on in. In this scene, after Phil's umpteenth outburst of rage, Peter has already made up his mind. From this point until the complete execution of the plan, Peter's motive will be heard more than 20 times in a row, more than 20, relentlessly, coldly. Phil is totally at the mercy of Peter, who is in complete control. At the beginning of the movie Peter told us, When my father passed, I wanted nothing more than my mother's happiness. For what kind of man would I be if I did not help my mother, if I did not save her? We know what Peter has done, what he is capable of doing to protect his mother, and we already know the meaning of his music. Knowing this, does now that scene when Peter visited his father's grave with his and his mother's music explain something different? Did Peter's father really commit suicide? We are speculating, but everything seems to fit. Let's imagine this final shot. 
It would be a very obvious way to show that Peter is going to be vigilant and on the lookout for George, because he is going to continue protecting his mother. However, the film closes with piano, but it is not a relaxed and happy piano but a turbulent one. For the moment Peter will let it go, but he will be lurking. His music can always come back.